Welcome to Natty's Crafts. So today I'm doing something a little bit different. Um, it's not just making a craft. Well, it is, but it's different. I'm making a painting today. So it is a horse painting, which I've never drawn, I've never painted a horse before. I used to draw as a child. I used to draw horses all the time. I have a whole book of what I've drawn, uh, but I've never painted a horse. So I thought this would be kind of fun and a little bit of a twist. And I also have not drawn in probably about eight years, maybe more even. Um, so it was it was an interesting task today. I um, had to change my plan midway through because I, I wasn't <laughs> I wasn't figuring it out quick enough. But anyway, so um, this is something everyone can do because everyone has a pencil and a, and a paper or a canvas. You can draw a flower. You can draw a house. You can draw just some graphic, you know, like triangles and circles and whatever. And make it your own. Put your own colors. Put your own spin. Put your own deal on whatever it is you're making. Similar to all other crafts. Always make it your own. Make it yours. Don't just copy someone. Make it yours. So I do hope you'll enjoy the video. I'm going to try to keep it short here. So let's go ahead and go take a look. So we're going to make this hand-painted drawing today. And you can make this as any drawing you want. You do not need to do a horse, of course, if you want a flower or a house or whatever else. We're just going to be using a Dollar Tree canvas for this one. So here's what we'll need. I chose this square canvas again from Dollar Tree, just what they consider wall art. You'll need some paint brushes, of course, and the best tool from Dollar Tree ever, the water brush cleaner. And then some paint, whatever colors, you know, whatever scheme you're, you're going for there. And then a small screwdriver and a staple gun to put the canvas back on. And glue too, hot glue would be helpful as well. Now I tried to um, take the can, well first let's take the hanger off, so we've got that off. And I tried to take the canvas off with that screwdriver, that did not work out. So we are just gonna go ahead and cut all around those staples and pull that canvas off. We want to keep the canvas though in as good a shape as possible because that's what we're using for our painting. So here it is all taken off. And then you can see all the canvas that's left under those staples. So we are going to try to get as much of that off as possible so it's not sloppy looking. So here I'm just grabbing on with some pliers and pulling that off. Then once that's all off, we're going to just take a quick measurement and see um, how much space we have. And we do want to clean it off. Since we're going to be painting on this side, I didn't want any dust or anything underneath that paint, so I did just clean it off with a wet wipe. And surprisingly, it was dirty. I, don't, I didn't understand that, but, you know, whatever. Nothing a wet wipe can't fix. And then I'm going to start, you know me and my black frames, all my frames have to be black. So I'm going to start just by painting my frame black. Now again, this is where your design comes into play. Paint it whatever color you want or you could just stain it as well. Because it looks a little bit like wood so you could, you could just stain it as well. Or paint it brown. Or pink or purple or yellow or whatever you like. <laughs> And then I'm also going to paint the back of the canvas. You can kind of see through the canvas there to the house that was on the other side. So I am going to paint the back of the canvas white because I do like that black and white crisp look. So the whole thing, just painting it white. That way we won't be able to see through and see that house on the other side. And here I had printed out some pictures of what I was going to try to go after. I really like that one at the top, but I couldn't do that. So I was aiming for this one down in the corner, but you'll soon find out that didn't work out either. Um, I used to draw uh, just with a regular pencil when I was a kid, uh, you know, 30 some years ago. Um, and I haven't really drawn, I probably haven't picked up a pencil in probably more than 10 years. So I thought this would be kind of fun to kind of bring back some memories. <laughs> and my memories of, of drawing are a little better than the actual reality of doing it. <laughs> so, uh, but I had fun. I just um, sketched out what I thought I wanted. I wanted a horse that was in movement or that was moving. But that was just too difficult for me. So I just went with a horse head instead. 
and I'm sorry, you can't see anything I'm doing here because it's on a pencil, but just drawing out what you want. If you wanted a flower, you know, just sketch out a flower or if you wanted a house or, you know, whatever drawing that you'd want. And then here I'm going to just fill in those lines that I just sketched out. And I'm using a really small uh, paintbrush because I want it to be really small, really fine. So again, I'm just going to sketch everything out with my small paintbrush. And you see there where it gets a little heavier. I figured because I'm going to fill in the picture, I can kind of blend some of that and it'll be okay. And I had a problem with this horse's ears. Now, if you're not a horse person, you know, you might not know the real specifics of the way I was, what I was going after here. But my, the ears on this horse look really bad. But I didn't want to redo it, so I left it. So once I've got it all sketched out, then I'm going to fill it in. Now, I made this gray paint in my last video. This paint, I don't know why it's so perfect, but I absolutely love it. And I don't care for gray horses so much, but I love this paint. <laughs> so I made my horse gray. And then you'll see I try to do some shading and whatever, try to act like I'm Bob Ross, which I'm not, so it didn't work out. But, you know, in the end, I, I liked it. I liked that gray. I liked the way it, it feels when you painted it, so it was really nice. And I don't have any happy trees. Sorry, Bob, I have no happy trees. But I have my little happy horse. I think he's happy. And so I'm gonna just go back and do the different colors. I did basically just the black and the gray and I just kind of went back and forth. I didn't wait for any of it to dry before I went with the next color to try to help it blend in a little bit. This would be important if you were doing, for example, a flower and you kind of wanted the blended colors. It would be good if you didn't wait for it to dry. You kind of want it to blend all in. But anyway, so that's what I'm doing. I'm just filling it in until my eyes are happy, until it's the way that I'm wanting it to be. Now, I kind of wish I would have left it like that where it looked kind of rough with my blending because I kind of like that um, better than what I ended up with. So that's the end result. That's what I went with. And then again, we're going to do our little measurement again just to see how much space we have and how much we need to cut off because we are going to end up cutting off the edges there. So just trying to figure out the spacing. And it would have been cool if I would have done a diagonal. That would have been cool. But I didn't do that. So never mind that idea. And I'm just going to take my pencil and I'm just going to uh, measure on the outside of the frame because that's where I will cut. And then we're just going to cut all that extra off. I mean, I'm pretty sure you know how to use scissors, so, you know, you're just cutting your lines. And then once we've got all of that set up, then we are going to go ahead and get it attached uh, to the frame. Now, I'm going to use some hot glue. You could use super glue, E6000, you know, all the different glue methods. Probably even wood glue would work. Um, there are some rough spots though. So that's, I used hot glue, kind of blend in those rough spots. And then I will use the staple gun as well. But so I'm just, I'm going literally all the way around the frame. So you got to do it somewhat quickly so that your glue doesn't completely dry by the time you get back around. Now it does not look like I'm going quickly here, but I am. And we just want to make sure it is centered well enough so that we have enough space on all four sides for that glue and the staples as well. Sorry about the big head in the way. And then we're going to flip it over. There's the Dollar Tree house. And just going to staple. I'm only going to staple in the corners because, again, there's hot glue all the way around, but I just want it to stay t snug or tight. So I'm just going to put staples in the corners to help just keep it tight. And this staple gun is what I used to use when I used to show horses and we used to put, we used to hang curtains up during the horse shows. And this is that staple gun and this thing is torture on your hands. I am going to have to buy a new staple gun if I'm going to be doing this anytime soon again. And then I'm just hammering in because the staples didn't go all the way through because I wasn't strong enough. So just hammering those in and then we're going to end up needing to cut off you see that little frame, that little bit of canvas behind the frame? We're going to cut all that off. 
Okay, so now that's looking good for me. And so then we're going to add the little hanger back on. And I do, I do want it to be centered. Now, I should, I should have, before I started painting, I should have realized which direction the house was facing. Because then you could have, in theory, had a reversible sign. But I didn't think about that at the time. So this will work for me. Again, just going to put that hanger in. And then we're just going to start cleaning everything up. So we've got the hanger on and we are up and running. And I really do like the way it looks. Um, it's not perfect, but you know, when you do your own art, it's never perfect. So someone else may think it's perfect. My husband asked, does everything have to be a horse? I told him, I haven't drawn a horse in 10 years and have never painted a horse before. So that was funny for me. Thanks so much for stopping by today. I sure hope you enjoyed the painting that we did today. And give it a good thumbs up as well as go ahead and push the subscribe button. I'd love it if you join me in this, this small family and subscribe. Thanks so much. Have a great one.